Hey there, Sam. In the previous lesson, we have defined our model relationship, but in our CEDAS, we haven't really implemented the logic to see the relationship between models. For example, we created a lot of posts and comments, but for all the comments record that we created, currently we're hard coding the post ID to be one. So all the comments that are generated by the factory are associated to post one. Ideally, the records should be more realistic and we should randomize the post ID on each comment. So let's start writing some code and see how we can achieve this. So here in our comment factory, we can put down the logic inside the definition method. To get a random post ID, right now I can think of two ways of doing this. The first way is we would find out how many model records are there in our database. In other words, find out how many posts are there in our database and generate a random ID between one and the total model count. If there's no record in a database, then we should create a new record and grab the ID of the newly generated record. The second solution is to fetch all the model records and randomly get one of the records from the results. Once we got a record, we simply need to grab the ID. Now, I don't really recommend a second method because it involves of getting all the model records currently inside the database and stored inside our computer's memory. So the issue is, what if we've got a million records inside our database? Storing these records is going to consume a huge chunk of our computer's memory. This is normally not an issue when we're seeding the data because we're not going to seed a million records. But we do need to take this issue into consideration when we write our logic. In contrast, the first method is only going to store the model count in the memory, which is basically a number, which is very lightweight. However, this method does have its own issue. And the issue is we are generating the ID based on a random number between one and the model count. We are assuming the ID of the model starts from one until the model count, and there's no gap at all in between. This won't be an issue unless we're deleting some records in one of the seeders, which is very unlikely to happen. I'm gonna go with method one because it is lighter. So the first step, we want to get a model count. To do that, Laravel provides us a very nice and easy way to query the model count by using one of the eloquent methods. So we just need to type in our model post and a query static method and then the count method. That's it, that's pretty simple, right? So once we got a count, the next thing we want to do is to check if count is zero. If count is zero, we'll create a new record by calling the factory function and the correct method. The correct method will return us the newly created model instance, and we just need to read the ID attribute from it, and that will be our post ID. If count is not zero, however, we'll simply generate a random number by using the php ran function, the starting range is one and the ending range is the count. And after this, we have successfully grabbed the post ID and we just need to pass our post ID variable in the array down here. And that's it. Let's test our code. We'll go to our terminal and run php artisan db seed. Once that's done, we'll go to workbench and view our comments table. The post ID column is no longer hard coded but filled with random post IDs. So far, so good. However, there's still one more issue with this implementation. Currently, this implementation is only suited for our post model. It's not very flexible, especially if we want to apply it to other models. Let's refactor this code so that we can easily get a random ID on other models as well. I'll create a new class and call it factory helper and create a public static method and I'll call it get random model ID. That accepts a string argument model, which will be the full class name of a model. And for the method body, we'll simply copy the code from before and paste it in here. And now let's add some PHP documentation to our function to stay organized. I'll simply say this function will get a random ID from the database. And also specify our model argument as the has factory trait for better auto completion in our IDE. And next, we just need to change the post model into our model argument. And we're done. Let's go back to our factory and refactor our code to call our factory helper function. Let's test our code. We'll go back to terminal and run dbc it again. Seems like it's working. We'll go to workbench, view our comments table. And our records looks fine, just like before. So our code is working. And now let's fix our user ID as well, so it's not hard-coded to user1. 
and also do a little bit of cleanup on our code. Now Laravel does offer us a factory helper function to generate relation records for us. I'll show you how it works. Let's go to our post seeder. And here we know that this seeder file is creating three posts. And if we want each post to have, say, three comments, what we can do is to call the has method and pass in the comment factory object. So we just need to call the factory function on our comment model and pass in three to tell it to generate three records. And the second argument of the has method is the relationship on the post model that we want to apply this factory on. In our case here, will be comments. This string has to be the same as the relationship method name in post. So after we added this line, Laravel will create three comments for each post generated by this factory. And now let's go to our main database seeder and comment out the comment seeder to stop it from truncating our comment table. And now let's go back to our terminal and run dbc again and go to workbench, view the comment table. And we now see a lot more records than before because now our post seeder is generating three comments for each post created. In contrast, if you want to generate posts from the comment seeder, we can use the for method. For example, let's go into comment seeder. We can call the for method and pass in a post factory and the relationship name in the comment model. In this case, all of the three comments created by this factory will have a post ID set to the post created in here. Personally, I don't really like to use these helper methods in my seeders. The reason is because they create side effects. What I mean by that is when I call a post seeder, I would only expect it to seed my post table. If you're using the has method, however, it will also create records in the comments table. And that's quite unexpected. And if you left it uncontrolled, it will create a huge mess. So I tend to avoid using the has and for method when building my seeders. So let's go back to our post seeders and comment seeders and comment out the helper functions. And now we have talked about how to seed one to many relations between posts and comments. But what about many to many between users and posts? The answer is simple. We can simply look through the post that we have created and attach users to each post in the pivot table. We'll go back to post seeders and store all the posts that we have created as a variable. The post variable we get here is a collection. So we can call all the collection methods on this object. If you want to learn more about the collection methods, the link is in the description. Here I want to look through all the posts. To do that, I can call the each method. The each method accepts a callback, which is a function that runs on each iteration. And a callback function accepts an argument, which is the iterated element in the collection. And I'll type in it as our post model for better code auto completion. In the callback body, what we want to do here is to assign a user to the post. We can do that by just calling the sync method on the user's relation and pass in an array of user ID. For now, I just want one user per post. So in the array, I'll just call the get random model ID again from our factory helper to get a random user ID. And that is pretty much it. Let's go to our terminal, run our seeder again, and go to workbench and view the post user table. And now you can see that each post is assigned to a random user ID. And that is pretty much it. We have now learned to seed relationship for our models in our database. Seeders are very important and powerful to quickly create a near realistic data set to test our application. Key takeaway for this lesson, Laravel offers us factory helper functions like has and for to quickly generate relation records for our models. We can use the sync method to generate many to many relation records in our seeders. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.